Aha. Give a short presentation of something that is very close to my heart. So what I'm going to present today is the importance of knowing yourself and how that can help you in business. Usually we think of business and personal life as two things separate, but really it's just the same. Being good at business is the same as being having good interpersonal skills. If you're good at communicating, then you will be good at communicating in your business, so on and so forth. I hope after today you will have a tool to take with you to see and test if an idea is right for you. Not only if an idea is right for the market or if it's right for investors or for, um, for the customer, but if it's right for you. Because I believe that if you're not in it with your heart, you won't make it in the long run. All right, let's begin. But most people, I believe, don't know their why. And this is a big problem. Think about why this is a problem for you if you're doing something and you don't know why. What could that lead to? Could it lead to being unfulfilled or to doing something half done, half well? Think about it for your in your case. When you know your why, the how gets much easier. Imagine you have a, a startup but you don't know why you're doing it. Then you might not know <laughs> what steps you're supposed to take. And hopefully throughout this presentation you will understand why your story matters, your personal life, your your personal path, all the things you've gone through and how you can use that as a strength in your personal life. But today it's all about believing in your ideas, so for your ideas. Throughout this presentation I'm going to touch on three things. Your story, your personal value and vision. And hopefully you will understand at the end of this presentation how they all are interconnected and why they're so important. This is actually a picture taken in, taken in my hometown where I grew up. It's a real donkey on a real beach and it's a tourist attraction. Um, a lot of people go there to see the donkey mm -hmm. and uh, one time actually the donkey drank my margarita. <laughs> uh, it's true. Uh, but. That's not the story I want to tell here today. I want to tell the story of a little boy. A little boy who grew up in Mexico. I grew up in Tulum, Mexico. You might have heard of it. And lived there until I was 16. And when I was a kid, I stood out a lot. It's no wonder, with my silvery blonde hair, I was the only white boy in my town. And I remember one sunny day, walking down the street, holding my mother's hand, I'm five years old, and a woman, a stranger, comes up to me and asks, can I touch your hair? <laughs> And in that moment, well, I'm just a little boy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, but in that moment, I felt two things. I felt like a, an alien completely because I looked so different. But I also felt special because I was being singled out and being treated differently. And in that moment, a dilemma started forming in, in me. I didn't really understand if it was good to stick out or if it was bad to stick out. As a five-year-old kid, 
I didn't understand if this was a good or a bad thing. So, time goes on and I moved to Sweden. I moved to Lund to study high school. And here, I don't stick out. So, for the first time, I just blend in and I look like everybody else. And it felt quite good, to be honest. But it also brought a dark side where I completely lost the identity I had before. Because before I was uh, someone who stuck out and I was the, the foreigner and uh, whatnot, you know? Now I was just one among many. So, that actually, this loss of identity launched me into a, a depression. Because I was new here in Sweden, I didn't have any friends. I had just arrived to a new place and you know, it can be difficult. I believe many of you can relate that moving to a new place can be scary and it can be Un it can be difficult to be in the unknown. Thankfully, my studies, I applied myself to my studies and that got me through. That got me through three years of the IB and uh, I came out the other side and I decided I'm done. I'm done with Sweden. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to get out. I think there was a slide for that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm completely done with Sweden. Uh, I do not want to be here. I don't feel like it's home. So, I moved to England instead. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it turns out it's not that different. And uh, I studied one year in England, but after that I decided that it wasn't really for me either. Uh, so I actually moved back to Sweden. But this time I said to myself, okay, if I'm going to know if I am Swedish or not, then I have to do it all in. I have to be completely all in. Then I will actually know if I'm Swedish or not if I feel like a Swedish person. So, what I did was that I decided I will go and create the stereotypical Swedish life for myself. I'm not kidding. This was how I was thinking back then. So I got myself, I was already in a relationship, but I, got, I continued in a relationship. I get an apartment. Uh, I get a stable job. I get uh, the drinking buddies on Friday, I get the car and the cat and all the things that go with it. And uh, a year later, after coming back from England, I actually had the whole Scandinavian dream, the whole life. And I put a, put a big check mark on my whatever list and said, okay, good job, Matthias. Pat myself on the back and I said, now what? Was this it? Was this my life? Is it just going to be more of the same from now on? Well, at that point, I got into a new sort of depression. But it wasn't like the one I had been in first. So I couldn't tell the signs. And this time, I decided to do something new. I decided to escape and leave my life as it was and move back home to my original home, Tulum. The reason I wanted to go back was because I wanted to have what I didn't feel I had in Sweden. I wanted freedom. In Sweden I felt I had all the bells and whistles. I had a very comfortable life, but I didn't feel free. So I moved back home, and here I find freedom. It was easy. 
it's a place where you are free just by being there. There are, aren't that many rules. Uh, there aren't stable jobs. There aren't drinking buddies on Fridays. The cats are on the street. <laughs> So, I arrive and I have this new life, and it's completely what I'm looking for. But after a while, I start feeling empty again. <laughs> what? I thought. I have this dream life that many that you see on magazines. I was working perhaps three hours a day. I lived on the beach. I was kite surfing. That was my job just eating fresh seafood and having the palm trees, the ocean, the wind. Yeah, that was it, basically. So, I found myself one night in a van just like this one with my friends, driving down the beach road. And I had this great moment. We had actually, let's see if this works from here. Yeah, there we go. We had just taken a downwinder. And in kite surfing, that means that you start from one point of the beach and you go with the wind, just continue going, you don't come back. So we did that and we end up on a beach with uh, a friend is having a, a birthday party. So we land our gear, we pack it up and we are having some margaritas and eating some uh, seafood and dancing barefoot in the sand and uh, until midnight then we decide okay we're done we pack our things and we jump in the van so i'm driving down well, i'm just in the passenger seat we're driving down this road in, at night it's a beautiful night and I'm sitting there thinking how I'm having this incredible adventure just happening around me. And it's this life that I've dreamt of and it's this dream, it's this life as a, a Mexican life, I could say. Because all my friends were Mexican, so it felt like it. And just previously, five months before, I had had a complete Swedish life. And in that moment, when I saw it like that, I realized that these were experiences that I was having, but they were not me. I'll try to reframe, rephrase that. Before, I was always identifying myself as either the Swedish guy or the Mexican guy. And I I never really understood that these were just things that were happening in my life, but they were not me. My identity didn't have to be placed on my nationalities. It didn't have to be placed on my backgrounds. Just because I grew up with Mexicans doesn't mean I'm Mexican. Just because I am lived with Swedish people in a Swedish way it doesn't mean I have to be Swedish. In that moment I realized I am enough just the way I am and that I am just me. And all the stuff that is happening around me is just an experience. In that moment, a lot of weight just dropped off my shoulders and I felt like, wow, I'm finally free. This was the freedom I was looking for. And that's the basis for this whole presentation. That moment and I want you to think back if you can recognize this in your life. That moment of understanding that I could choose who I wanted to be. Okay, so let's talk business and let's apply this to business and let's apply this to you. Let's apply this to your idea. How does an understanding of ourselves apply to 
our ideas, our business, our future business, our career, us as a person? How can we benefit ourselves and our relationships by understanding ourselves better? So, what if I told you that in your business and in your life, you are your most powerful asset. Not the type of assets you see on a balance sheet. But your ideas, your personality, your quirky ways, the things you keep from others and only do at home. What if I told you those things are perhaps the most important in your life and perhaps the key to your quote-unquote success. I want to demonstrate this through a female entrepreneur who is an icon of the fashion industry. She has long passed, but she, I know, has inspired me to think how to bring ourselves into what we do in life and to do such with such passion that we inspire others. How can you be original in a world where we're so many? What are you, what are you supposed to be? You. Thank you. I want to tell you about a friend of mine. Uh, he's an artist. This is one of his art pieces. And before we, we did the exercise that we're going to do in this workshop, he was kind of confused over why, or he didn't know why he was doing his art. You know, he loves doing it, and he's been doing it for a long time, and he sells it too. But he didn't understand himself at a great enough level to understand why he was doing it. So we did this exercise that we're going to do later. And after that, he understood that he was doing his art because he wanted to promote acceptance through multiculturality. So he understood himself that through his life journey, he had certain experiences, and those experiences led to certain values, the core values that we're going to talk about. And through these core values, he has then implemented them into his business, and under he now understands much clearer why he's doing it, and when he understands, everyone else understands. Now people understand the message with his art. And when people understand the message of the art, they buy it much more. You see, I believe success is personal. It's personal in many ways. It's personal that you define what success means to you, but it's also personal in the way that you get to succeed. And you get to succeed as you, not as someone else. I think many people do get lost in trying to be someone else because they see this person was successful and they did it this way, so I should try to do it that way and then I'll be successful. But you see, it's not possible. The only way to be successful is first, well, you got to define what success means to you. But then you got to follow your own way. And your own way is not paved. It doesn't exist. You have to take it with every step. With every step you take, you have made your way. Through my life, from some of the experiences that I've shared with you today and some other I've had, I have created my list of the things that are important for me. These are my core values. 
These are the things that drive me in life. For example, the story of escaping led me to realizing how much I value freedom. Truth has come to me through many ways, but understanding what is true for me has become very important and not listening too much to others. Having passion in everything I do, I think that came from my Mexican upbringing and listening to a lot of uh, Mexican Latin music. Um, love, I just have a love for life and integrity in everything I do and with everyone I work is very important for me. And the point I'm trying to make here is that these things are not made up. I cannot make these things up. I did not sit down and intellectually think about these things. Even though many companies try to do it that way, they try to set the, these are the company values. And that's, that's one level of it. And we'll talk about that later. But these things are not made up. These things come from my life. And many of those things I didn't even choose. I didn't choose where I was born. And neither did you. I didn't choose some of the experiences, both bad and good, that I had. Many happened by chance. I happened to be at the right or wrong place at the right or the wrong time. And the point I want to make with this is that when you understand how your past influences your present, you can become very clear of where you want to go. With the exercise we're going to do in just a bit, get to see how your past creates your values and from your values you can create a future and you can decide what you stand for or rather you can discover what you stand for. You can discover a cause to work towards. You can see a long-term vision. You might find what you feel so committed to do on an intrinsic level that you don't want to do anything else. And isn't that a good way to run a business? Where you rather not do anything else? And this, what I told you in the beginning, will hopefully help you understand if a business idea is good for you. Not if it's a good business idea or a good idea, if it's good for you. So, let's see. I'm going to ask you to help me to pass these around. Before we begin, I want you to start thinking about your life and uh, the big things you've gone through and how that has led to where you're sitting today. How every single thing that has happened since you were born, every single thing, has led to you sitting here right now, listening to me. Because what we're going to do is that we're going to look into the story, and not any story, your story. And we're going to see how there's a start in your story that you can identify, which becomes a dilemma. And this dilemma leads to you searching for answers. And in your searching, you find yourself at the bottom at some point. And from that, you continue searching for something. You believe you find the answer. Like, for example, me moving to Mexico or to England. But you realize it's not it. So you have to keep searching. You keep searching, you keep searching. At some moment, you might have a breakthrough. You start having realizations. Oh, now I get it. And from that, life goes on. And it can still continue to do ups and downs. This is not, this is usually just one part of your life. And beside this job, I work with uh, consulting. I consult companies on how to create brands and how to tell the brand story. So this is directly applicable. This is storytelling how to tell a story, but not only the type, the Hollywood story, not only the Disney story, but also a brand story, for example. Your personal story 
It's a way to captivate an audience when you divide the things that have happened in your life in this way and you tell them in this order. So what I want you to see is that through each moment, either great or bad, we start forming personal values. And it's these personal values that shape us, whether we want to or not. And if we understand what these are, we can understand ourselves and how to create more in the world. If it's, an, if it's a business or if it's a relationship or if it's anything. So this is the core of what I've been telling you today. It's the story leads to values, leads to a vision. And in marketing terms, a story can be a brand story, the values can be the why of the company, and the vision can be the magnetic attraction. The reason why people want to work with you, the reason why investors want to invest in you, the, the reason why your customers want to buy from you. So, we're going to jump right into it.